Fionat's uh, leading out, Giacomo is second. So, 24 teams are waiting to be released. So, Norway, Sweden and France on the front line. They'll be setting the early pace and it will be frantic, uh, jostling for position around this 2.5 kilometre track. Three times, each uh, rotation they'll come in, or the first two rotations for prone shooting. Any targets missed from a magazine of five rounds, spare rounds will be hand-fed into the rifle barrel. Any targets remaining after those three spare rounds, it's penalty loop. And then uh, another 2.5 kilometres, then it's the stand with the same uh, ability to use spare rounds should there any targets remain. And I think we will see some penalty loops today, Scott. I'm going to predict that we won't see so many, anybody wanting to take the lead particularly on this first lap. There aren't so many big, big names. I mean, of course, there's big names always in biathlon, but no super big names that are going to want to break the field as such on the first lap. So I expect a slower pace, and uh, you can challenge me on that if, if they go faster. That's interesting because it would normally be for Norway, either Terje Bo or Johannes Tingis Bo, and they're given the mantle, the respect of lead this round. And uh, yes, I think Fabian Claude will probably, and I think that Philip Field, Field Anderson will get restless and think, okay, I need to be like, like my older team members and take the responsibility out front. And that's what's going to happen is those at the back are going to be able to make their way forward and that is going to frustrate the leaders. As you can see already, teams are managing to get to the front. A little bit of a stumble there from Bib24. Hey, Claude. And good to see the, uh, the Slovenian team uh, Trishan is uh, on the left side in third place now. So the race has just uh, got underway. 24 teams are taking part today in the mixed relay, the first of the mixed relays of this racing season. And you could sense the, the crackling of nerves on the start line. Yes, Benelin taking a confident lead now, skate two, and you can expect him to do that pretty steep, deep into this hill, as he commonly does, opting to do skate two instead of skate one. It's certainly without the, the big names uh, a little slower to this point. Normally it's quite frantic trying to, the fastest skiers trying to make the rest of the fuel hard. So uh, quite a pedestrian pace so far. And Ranta of Finland managing to get to the front. And it really is slow. And opportunity for the slower teams or the, the lower ranked teams to get forward and put themselves on the map. A little bit of TV time doesn't hurt these smaller nations. Certainly doesn't. And... You can see as, as they went off into the distance there, it's a very, very tight racing. So this was the start, uh, breaking free. The advantage really to Norway 
Sweden and France as they uh, are at the front of the grid. Difficult corners now. They've all been well briefed. They watched the races previously this morning, so they know what to expect. It's not going to be easy, and they will have practice before the race started. And I think uh, what we saw earlier in the single mix, really, the, the corners became icy. The surface layer was pushed aside, uh, exposing the ice underneath. And, and we did see many falls. This track is slightly easier, though, I think. They haven't gone from the high point straight back to the stadium in one go. But they will be climbing back up again, almost to the high point. You do not want to be caught behind too many uh, at this point in the track. And uh, if there's one fall at the front, you have to have quick reactions to avoid going down yourself. It's quite tense, isn't it? You're okay at the front, you can uh, take your own line, the best race line. And there's always great pace down around this right hand of this track has been used uh, over the years. There's been certain changes further back into the hills, but we've always come out to this faraway point. Even as far back as the first, there's one down there. Oh, what a shame. I think that was Pat, uh, Patrick of Latvia, I believe. Hard to see. It was hard to see. Uh, hopefully we'll get another uh, take on that to get uh, confirmation of the team. I will soon see, soon see who is uh, spread out. So the field is still very tight. Uh, 18 teams in 11 seconds. Maybe opening up a little. Shamiev, Romania, Moldova through. Well, it was Korea, actually, the faller. I think it was. I think I'm right in saying that. Very slippy conditions. You can see that the footing is not, is not stable like you would hope it would be. And, uh, yeah, a lot of stumbles. So I think there's more falls to be expected during this race. There is. I beg your pardon. It is, but you were right. Patriots uh, from Latvia was the faller. He's 26 seconds behind. And uh, it is Korea that are in second last position. Other teams, the, the local team, uh, locals have come up here. The awesome little, nearly a fall there, I thought, from Nellin. That was uh, a little stumble. Yes, the Slovenian team, they'll be hoping for um, something quite special today. And with Anna Maria Lampitz on the anchor, she's a former cross country skier, but the first ever World Cup in Hockville since she finished in fifth position. A miracle finish. She wasn't so good here in, this, in the same race, the sprint. She was 69th, missing six targets. So exciting for me watching Italy right now. I do think that they have the possibility of winning, if not silver today, uh, gold, if not gold, then silver, because they have a very strong team. It just relies on Vitozzi and her prone. That's what it comes down to. Vitozzi, yes, she will. only hit one out of five in the sprint competition and, and ranked third in the world. Sadly, she didn't make the top 60, so losing so many points. So, first time in. The athletes have to match up their bib number to the lane for the first time, and then it's an open range. Most teams are in already. Just Latvia coming in at the end there. So France uh, trying to get the, the gain on fast shooting, but it hasn't paid off for Fabien Claude. Norway, I, I like that, Scott. That was the discipline from Philip Fjeld Anderson. A long delay from Nalin on that final shot in his prone, but he gets it down. Worth the wait. Germany, one target remaining, one spare round. They'll be hoping we'll close that red into white it has. So Excellent shooting any from Germany. Just thinking, uh, any surprises? Uh, Rank 10th, the uh, Swiss team are out in fifth place. That's a good start. And uh, I think the best uh, mover there is uh, in second place, it's Claude from France. And in third place, it's Claude, his older brother, but representing Belgium. He's in third place. And, and having a fabulous year, Florent uh, Claude. He always loves the relay competitions and uh, performs very well. That excitement of being in the pack. It works for some. It makes others slightly nervous. The Norwegians will be breathing a sigh of relief that this was so clinically carried out. So Nellen, we saw him. Quite a lot of movement there to pick up that spare round and feed it in, but back on target. And Jesper Nellin, he's, uh, he's been a very reliable skier in recent years, but his shooting has let him down. And uh, this year we've seen a, a, an 11% improvement on last year 
in his shooting, which is why he's starting to feature a lot more in the top 10 on the World Cup. And I think that's probably the same. I haven't got the stats in front of me, but that would, I would imagine, for Laurent for Claude representing Belgium, he really is consistently, there he is in third place now for, for Belgium. It's brilliant to say that. A small nation, a small team in Biathlon in third place. It, Swi Switzerland. Yeah, Italy a little bit further behind, and uh, Germany coming out of the shooting range 20 seconds back. So those two spares that were required, unfortunately losing time. So a little bit of uh, ski speed required from Roman Rees to drag back that deficit. And I do think once you're on a 20 second deficit, you have to then push, punch the pace harder than you would normally like to take this second lap of 2.5. So yes, once you start missing targets early, you put you and the rest of your team under pressure. So this is the scene on the second rotation of 2.5 kilometers. Norway, even without the big names, without them, they're at the top of the field, but only by 2.3 seconds. You can see how heavy the course is today and uh, how slow the skis are running. It looks lethargic, and that's because it's hard skiing. And I think the men it, it actually got the short straw this time because they're raced on Friday. Yes, they got a sprint, 10 kilometers on Friday. The 12.5 yesterday in the pursuit competition and three consecutive days in the relay today. And you take somebody like Timothy Lapshin, who is now going to be racing four races because he's racing the mixed, single mixed relay and the mixed relay, four races, three days. Yeah, that, that is pretty tough. Eh? And the same with Avakumova, again, representing Korea. She's raced earlier this morning. She's out again. Yeah, on leg, what is she, leg three, leg four actually, she's the anchor. Give her more rest, that's why she's the anchor. <laughs> and also the Moldova team, uh, Mikhail Usov and Alina Stremos raced two hours ago and they're back in their team again now. Lovely technique there from Fabian Claude. He's uh, jump, skipping up that hill, but you don't want to lose momentum on that very steep part. You want to carry your speed from the downhill over it so that this plateau-ish section, which is much steeper than it appears on camera, you can uh, maintain that speed over the top of the hill. And uh, we've got Fabian leading Fabian Claude, and here's his uh, older brother gasping for air, losing some distance, sadly, uh, representing Belgium. And uh, Florent Claude is still there. He's still uh, at the sharp end of the race. He's still in third place. Also, Nelene losing five seconds to Claude on, uh, over the course of this lap. Sorry, seven seconds to Claude uh, because uh, a little bit slower and I'm a bit concerned about their ski speed. That's interesting. And uh, Roman Rees, we mentioned 20 seconds. It's, he puts himself under pressure. He has to try and chase that speed. He's actually lost two seconds. I'm in favour of just letting it go to your own race if you don't try and regain that deficit unless you're a renowned fast skier. Just do your own race and don't focus about catching anything up. That'll happen in the shooting range if you ski according to your ability. Yes, so uh, Germany still find themselves in eighth position. Any other big surprises further back? Uh, local team, the Slovenian team, 39 seconds. San in 13th place. Didn't need any spare rounds, so his shooting is good. Hopefully he can uh, improve on that 13th position. So Claude has really taken a hard pace coming out of uh, shooting one, seven seconds behind Anderson, closing that gap and then extending the lead over the rest of the field. So a very fast pace from Claude and I would expect to see a little bit of difficulty now in the stand shooting. Interesting and uh, I, I feel that uh, Philip Field Anderson is just is comfortable tucking low and just taking the advantage of the drafting. So, second time in, boy, does it go fast. That's only 12 minutes 15, and they're back almost on to the firing point. So, five shots standing. Should they miss any opportunity to hand feed each of the up to three spare rounds? Philip Field has missed the last two. Norway now under pressure. He's missed the, the first three for Norway. Well, Fabian Claude, that was absolutely beautiful. 
Anderson now, he's got three spare rounds. He's got three targets remaining. Huge amount of pressure now on his shoulders. Absolutely the opposite of my prediction. And the two brothers are out in first and second position. Florence and Fabian Claude. Oh, amazing. Two different nations. Amazing. This is, this is good work from Anderson. He knows the seriousness of this last shot. He got it. Very good. Germany, Italy, Sweden, and Norway all leaving at approximately the same time. Czech Republic also going clear. I can imagine the brothers Boo watching this will be, <laughs> will, will be cringing. Oh, Norway is now, what, uh, 29 seconds behind. Well, I, he's going to be highly incentivized to take that 29 seconds and turn it into 20. Let's see if, how much time he can get back off the leader by the end of this lap. So yes, uh, Fabien Claude leading for France, his older brother in second place for Belgium, 16 seconds behind, and all the while, almost unnoticed, Switzerland uh, in third place, shooting fast as always, but he did need two spare rounds. That was beautiful. So this is the action uh, on that uh, pressure shoot, the stand. There goes Florent Claude. Uh, and at the front, it's his younger brother. He's trying to chase him. He hasn't quite got the, the pace of his younger brother. We'll probably see him in the background quite soon, the Belgium athlete. Looking very relaxed from Fabian Claude. And uh, I can't say I'm pleased to admit it, but my prediction was <laughs> entirely wrong. <laughs> Opposite, in fact. <laughs> Fabian Claude, fantastic shooting. And Philip Fjeld Anderson really struggled in that stand. I wonder what it was. He looked relaxed. He behaved normally on the map, but something just wasn't quite right. It's strange, you know, he's been watching for so long the, the big names of the Norwegian team. He is a big name. But uh, then the responsibility all of a sudden on his shoulders. There's Belgium still in second. To his right, our left is uh, Switzerland. Stolder really having a fabulous season. In fact, Stolder now moving up into second place for Switzerland. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Florence Claude ends up in eighth or, or eighth position probably by the end of this lap because he is definitely struggling physically. Stolder doing a great job to keep the pack away. Yes, Florent Claude, we'll see him again. Such a, such a strong, his frame is um, Mr. Muscle, and, and that's a lot of weight to carry up. <laughs> Muscle is good, but it can also be heavy. Yes, Bernalin is definitely not in the sh shape that we've seen him in over the past couple of days, allowing people to ski past him and to open up a gap. Not normal, so I think the ski speed or the form is compromised. Yes, uh, Martin Poncholoma next. He's 27-year-old Poncholoma. He's only, I say only by his high standards. He's the world champion from the sprint competition two years ago. He only finished 21st on Friday, but he is very fast on the track. He's only had a 20th and a 21st here in the two outings. His shooting hasn't been great, but I think Switzerland can't, Sweden, sorry, can come back into this. And France, whoa, a little stumble there from Fabian Claude, but I think as predicted, this team is very, very strong. And it wouldn't surprise me if this gap continues to increase over the course of the race. I love the way he cornered there and kicked down that descent. His hands were below the knees, so keeping the body weight way down. Let's have a look at Stolder. Very icy. You can see when their legs separate, that's them struggling to, to keep them together because the ice is forcing them apart. Well, Stolder, not quite as low, but certainly carrying a lot of pace. Just trying to get a... Uh, a sound of what he's saying. I think he was saying, uh, yeah, keep punching, keep punching. It's 24. Philip Fjeld Anderson losing a second so far to Claude over the course of this lap. So you can see he's fighting. He's doing his best to close the gap, but it's not happening to the degree that he'll be wanting as he goes past Stolder on the left-hand side of the screen. Well, this is uh, pretty interesting. Uh, Anderson, you said he would be uh, burning the track up. He actually is. And I think you said that uh, Belgium would be down potentially in eighth position by the handover. Sadly, they're down in fifth at the moment. Good to see Poland. Uh, we, over the last few years, uh, the budget hasn't helped. The team strength has dropped a little, but wonderful to see Poland back in the top 10, eighth position at the moment. Marasic, very, very talented youngster. 
ninth for Czech Republic, Lemmerer, always reliable through the rifle. He's one, used one spear. So it's going to be a big lead for Quinton Fidion Maillet on this second lap. And uh, you couldn't have handed it over to a more decorated athlete in the field right now. What an athlete. And also, uh, twice, I believe, he's been in the winning team for France in a mixed relay. So, well, he's felt well and truly accustomed to the pressure of coming up uh, now the second leg, Fion Maillet. So France very much uh, dictating things here. I can't believe uh, Claude put the brakes on there. He had to. He was coming in so fast. And uh, not the best of handovers when you put your brakes on to hand over. But look at this man, Theo Maillet, proved yesterday with that first time on the podium this season that he is back and he is back on form. Well done, Norway. They left the shooting range down in sixth place, 29 behind, although the, the time hasn't changed much. The positions have changed dramatically. Johannes Daly taking on the second leg and the responsibility from Norway. I hope he, for his sake, he doesn't push this too hard and struggle when he comes in for prone shooting. Belgium managing to hold fifth there, so that's a great day for Belgium. Italy in sixth, and now handing over to to the on-form athlete, the 22-year-old Giacomel, finishing fifth yesterday, a personal best. Sweden, uh, with Nelin losing even more time, meaning Ponce Lonema is going to be faced with an option. Does he go hard and try and close some time in lap one, or does he run his own race? Uh, yes, I, th I think the, the, the instinct, isn't it? You, you feel this, I've got to make up some time, so the, the instinct is that you have to try and, and, and contain the lead. So I think Ponce Lonema will possibly be, go be going outside his comfort zone. Speaking about outside the comfort zone, I think Pinello of for Switzerland is going to be up against it to maintain his position. Uh, but certainly uh, with the adrenaline of the moment, he'll probably do it for lap one. And uh, hopefully the, the, that isn't going to leave too much pain in the legs for the shoot range. <laughs> and it is real pain. Americans, uh, we saw the American team doing so well earlier in the single mix, really. Down in 14th now, but they're ranked 19th. So it's a good day and I think it can get better. Now then, on the exchange, it was 24.9 seconds advantage. I wouldn't be surprised if Johannes Daly is really attacking. There he is in the far distance uh, to reduce that 24.9. We'll have to wait and see. It's an awesome lead to have been granted by Fabian Claude there, and he's opting again to skate to very far into the hill. He is uh, Benny Doll. He can always spot Benny Doll with his unique technique, but powerful skiing. Uh, I thought it was going to be Daly leading the chase, but uh, Benny Dahl restless. And what are we, 27? So that just shows us how fast uh, Fion Maillet once again. He is on form, he is back, and he's setting the fastest pace. And Finello not used to this pace whatsoever, but he's staying with Daly and Dahl, and I think that's a very bold choice. So here's uh, Thierry Langer for Belgium. Belgium still in fifth place. Brilliant uh, day so far for Team Belgium. And actually, Maya Klutens, uh, the 21-year-old, is taking the third leg. It's her birthday today, so let's hope that that birthday moment, she's good. She's at a 43rd and a 42nd here so far. Let's hope that uh, she can carry on uh, the success that we're witnessing from the small nation of Belgium. Giacomel Ponsoloma, 6 and 7, currently 45 seconds behind the lead. Good to be working together, that's for sure. Ski speed, very similarly matched currently. Now let's have a look at the Grandmaster. I was just thinking when you were talking about Theo Maillet earlier, on the flight out to the Olympics last year, if anyone said to him, mm, you're going to get the return flight with five medals around his neck, do you think he would have believed it? <laughs> I, think, I don't think anybody would believe it. What incredible <laughs> success. It's uh, and in, in the conditions and against somebody as notorious as Johannes Tingis Boe. Yeah. How can you expect such success under those conditions? Yes, and, and, and those medals were two gold and three silver, and he has become... He's finding his way again this season quite late. He said he was going to come into the season powerful, focused, better. It hasn't happened until yesterday when he touched the podium again. I think he is back now. This race, I think, is going to be favouring those who go slower on lap one. You can see the rain coming down hard. And uh, Finello, I suspect, will be the first victim of the intense pace lap one. Uh, but Dole really working hard to close down that deficit on Quentin Fillon Maillet. 
Finello, you mentioned he's going to be going at, uh, outside his normal comfort zone. I think he is. He's stretched. And uh, very good to see that uh, Benny Dahl has pulled two seconds back uh, from the lead time of Fio Maillet. This is, I think, for 22-year-old uh, Giacomel, supremely disciplined. He knows that he doesn't want to try and go too hard on this first lap. He's just, just trying to see his time. 42, he left the... Or he, he had his start for his race. 42 behind. He's now 47. So I think Giacomel pacing it beautifully well. This is aggressive again, his usual, not quite as usual. When we saw him at his best last year, slightly more explosive there as the legs get all the power through the, the heel, through the foot, into the ski. And now he'll be getting low and just taking as much time to get the breath back, preparing for shoot one, prone, and five shots. He's got eight rounds to get five targets. Love the music setting the, the scene. The shooting conditions are definitely slightly more kind than they were. You can see them fluttering from the left there. And when the athlete zeroed, it was actually much the same. So five shots prone, huge lead. Well, he's deciding to move the sights there to account for the win from the left. He moves and he's, three he's over to the left. Too oh. much. Too much. Too much. Bring it back. Oh, he's, he's gone. He's gone the same way. Ah. Not good. He's right on the edge. Oh, he oh. certainly is. Needs to drag oh, those sights back. Oh, he needs to go back. Bring them back five. He's gone the wrong way. Well, didn't expect that. And the wind's dropped dead. That's uh, that's why he's over left. Yes, he's come back the correct direction now, so he should be on for the remaining three shots. Germany, Benny Dahl the same. Is it the skiing speed? Is it the, this turnaround of wind? Fio Maie is in trouble. Clicking from Benedict Dahl as well. Fio Maie should be on, but he probably doesn't know that he is. It's confusing. Norway, Dali, five for five. France on the penalty loop. That's the huge, huge surprise. Didn't see that one coming. He misread the adjustment, which is incredible at that level. Benny Dahl, two, two bullets left. One target standing. He's gone. Switzerland, maybe the pace, maybe the wins. Stolder struggling. Giacomel massively back in the race for Italy. Great performance from Belgium as well. I can't say I expected Langer to be able to maintain that pace and shoot that well. Fantastic effort from Belgium. Well, incredible turnaround on the range. Giacomel finds himself just having a look there. Oh, Sweden on the penalty loop as well. No! Poncholoma went for the fast, fast, aggressive skiing. It hasn't worked even with three spares. I'm amazed because there hasn't been much wind this season, Scott. The athletes seem to be forgetting the, the adjustments of the sights. A Leitner going clear now, and a Czech Republic also going clear, and that's Kutschmark. Well, what a turnaround. So uh, the race has completely changed at the front of the race. Dali out 14 seconds ahead of Dahl from Germany. Finello from Switzerland still in third place. And Giacomo really reducing the deficit. It was 40 seconds, 46 seconds. Giacomo has got it down to 18 seconds in fourth place. Uh, fantastic plot twist, that's for sure. I can't say you could have <laughs> predicted Quentin Filio Maillet to end up on the penalty loop and make a completely false estimation of where the wind was pushing the round. Quite amazing. So uh, Filio Maillet... I thought it was going to be a runaway victory for France at that stage. They're still in the race. Of course, they are at 21.5 seconds behind. Fifth place for France. Great performance from Johannes Dali. That was 26.9 seconds behind coming into the shooting range and coming out of the shooting range with 14 seconds ahead. Yes, uh, five out of five from Johannes Dali. He, he settled a little, little longer. He looked at the wind flags a second longer and he saw the changes in the wind from zero and uh, compared, compared to the time in which they came into the range. I would expect Quentin Fion Maillet, there he is in uh, fourth place on this, uh, looking down the hill. I would expect him to close, to punish himself on the track for the errors on the range. I'm very like impressed with... Uh, the speed of Finello right now, managing to hold in there with Benedict Dahl. A great <laughs> effort, there's no doubt about that. Yep, an inspired day. And in the mixed relay earlier today, the single mixed relay, 
uh, of course, uh, touching the podium, third place, Becerga and uh, her teammate, uh, really emotional as they were on the third place on the podium, but certainly inspiring the mixed relay team now. Hartweg it was, uh, both 22-year-old. So Finello actually, he's a, a, he is a very fast skier, but his shooting is what commonly lets him down with his prone actually standing at 69%. So not only has he done a very good job <laughs> relative to the other skiers, but relative to his own performance, he's done exceptionally well. I used to find that uh, with three spare chances, uh, it, it, it makes you relax more, doesn't it? Uh, you, you can take a little more risk. So at the front of the race, it's Norway. They were in sixth place. Uh, as they exited the range on Philip Kjell Anderson's uh, stanchion, he worked hard and brought them back into it, but quite a deficit as they started at 24 seconds. Daly's turned that 24 minus into 14 to the positive. And Daly is going to be handing over to Knossen, who is the weaker leg of the Norwegian team. And uh, with s struggling to penetrate the top 20, so far on the individual results. So let's see how she can handle it if she's given an advantage by Johanna Staley. That's going to be interesting. And Knotten, you mentioned, um, she's shooting really well though. 54 position in the sprint, she only missed one. And 36 position in the, in the pursuit. So she did move forward, but the ski speed uh, appears to be slightly off form at the moment. Dahl, Finello, Giacomel doing very well to keep the Omae away from them but he's on the hunt and he is closing down that lost time I, you know it's quite worrying I think for me Scott he's not yes he, he was second yesterday but he's not quite back he had a setback over Christmas with a, a cold uh, he was hoping to build his training base again and uh, he's pulled five seconds back off the lead time Johannes Dahl isn't skiing Dahle isn't skiing slow so Fio Maie is really attacking on the track. Is that a worry coming into stand? Ponsoloma, he has also just lost one second to Johannes Daly. There's a lot of very consistent ski speeds where Daly's setting a pace and a lot of people are matching it, not losing much, not gaining much. Yeah, Ponsoloma really powering his way on the track. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, not gaining killing himself out there but not gaining much Felix Leitner he's losing time he's gone from 58 54 seconds coming out of shooting three and now he's at one minute three seconds so not great skiing although very good shooting oh that's such a shame that is such a shame that's Belgium and uh, at the fastest part of the track losing all of his speed Thierry Langer needs somebody to help him and give him a spare pole oh what a mess I really hope we see a, a pole given it would probably be from another team because there's not that many coaches out there for Belgium. He needs help right now. So, Dali, does he need help? No, he doesn't. Totally confident in his ability. His stomach moving, his chest not. First shot, hit. S slight flickering of wind uh, there just for the third shot. That was a miss. Hesitation, always a bad sign, isn't it? A long hesitation into the final shot for Dali. Opportunity, Switzerland. Ah, oh, missed there from Switzerland. Germany, Italy, and Fio Maillet missing the middle shot. Everybody's missing. The wind is not that strong, but it's gusting. It was a moment ago, still. And now, there's an intense breeze. Benny Doll, Benny Doll, just one to go. And the same with Dali, one to go, one standing. Jacamel first out, fantastic shooting. Ah, excuse me, sorry, Filion Maé first out. He's managed to retrieve that lead that he once had and Dahl quickly on his heels, eight seconds back. Can you believe it? Norway on the penalty loop. Uh, it's Filion Maé uh, turning a massive deficit into a positive, but still in second place, only 3.5 behind Jacamel. Unbelievable that uh, Johannes Daly has had such a meltdown for just one shot. Yes, the coaches, are, and, and why not? The, the Norwegian team is so strong. Philip Field Anderson, Johannes Daly have been performing incredibly well in their own personal individual races. Now with the pressure of team on their shoulders, they seem to have really struggled. Ponsoloma there, shooting well, one spare. Uh, Belgium struggling, the rifle to the need a 
a magazine must have fallen out, so a magazine, that's legal, you're allowed to be handed a magazine when it was going so well for Belgium. Ah, what's his problem? Oh, don't blow down. Oh, uh, yes, he took the magazine out first. I still think he'll get a, a caution for that manoeuvre. He did take the magazine out, though. Oh, what a pity. Belgium were in, what, fourth position? F fifth position when he fell. Well, what a turnaround, what a race. I had total confidence uh, when Dali came in because he was... He was, he was running his own race. He could dictate his own pace into the stand shoot. The pressure he didn't expect. Oh, what a pity. The left oh. leg went out. There's the magazine. Well, no, that's part of the... The, the butt plate. The butt yeah. plate, so I'm surprised. Massive impact there. Yeah. And and to kill all of that speed, Scott, to then struggle and stumble around getting up, then figure out you got a pole snapped. He's lost 40 seconds in that fall. Horrible conditions. You can see it's deep, slushy snow in patches, and then in other patches, it's sheet ice. That contrast means it's unpredictable and very hard to keep your footing. Yes, and, and that left ski, so he was well-weighted, overweighted on his left leg. Um, and then he didn't bring it in quite quick enough, so that dragged him out, put him off balance. He sat backwards and lost all of the brilliant start that they had today. What a turn of events that we've seen so far. Giacomel taking it on the lead to snow plowing, in fact, down that part of the course. And I think that's just, yes, it's slower, but you're, you're protecting yourself from uh, potentially breaking damaging equipment, falling and uh, losing even more time. Now, he set off from the range 3.5 ahead of there, the great Fion Maillet. I'm sure many would have thought, let's have a look at this. Well, he did blow down the... Oh, man, this is... Uh, he needs to put his hand up and get a screwdriver, get support. He has to indicate that he needs help. Snow has completely filled his foresight. Uh, he needs to get a screwdriver and push it from the other side. Yeah, he should have raised his hand and then one of the, the range officials would have been able to help him. But to do that, to, put, to blow forward down the barrel, I, I believe that could be uh, a disqualification at the discretion of the range officials. The jury, yeah, the that's jury. a real shame. We mentioned uh, Jacamel, his maturity beyond his years. He's 22 year old. He took the first lap, which appeared very comfortably. And we, we, we talked about that when he came past here first time of 2.5. And now he's got energy, but uh, we can see in the background that it is beginning to close. Benny Dole beginning to be the stronger athlete. Quentin Filion Maillet, he's not maintaining the speed. He's actually losing time to Giacomel. Not much between the 13.6 and 14.3 kilometer checkpoints. But before that, he was losing time. Finello, what a fantastic race from him. And I must say, my prediction in that regard also wasn't so accurate. Great pace and great shooting from the Swiss. Sandra Flunger, the coach for the women's team, head coach there, just uh, trackside giving the information. Turmoil, I think that would sum up what's going on in Johannes Daly's mind. Absolute turmoil from, what was it, 20 seconds lead to now 36 seconds deficit. This is what makes biathlon so exciting, the unpredictability. And the conditions just aren't bad enough to say, yes, there's the two best teams are going to end up on the penalty loop. And the other aspect, look, look what's happening now. <laughs> we're on a plateau here and the weather comes up from both sides because we're at the high point and the mist is coming in from left side of range. I'm so impressed with this man. Uh, he's found his magic. He lost his way in terms of shooting last year. Giacomel, we're watching him now. He's put that right in the summer, and now waiting for him. You said the Italians were one of your favourites today. Dorothy Avira about to get underway. She's had a third here on Thursday in the sprint competition. She came second yesterday in the pursuit. Very much on form, so third leg is strong for Italy. So the changeover, it's Italy at the front, coming into leg three. Outstanding performance from Giacomel. Bionats was good. Giacomel really was flying. So the France still five seconds, although he very much faded, Fiumaye faded on the track. We maybe thought he would with his 
form set back at Christmas, Germany in third, and Switzerland surviving so well, thriving so well in fourth place, 15 seconds behind. Johannes Daly now coming in. He will be gutted with the performance he's just had. But uh, yeah, I think a little bit of addressing what went wrong, figuring it out, but moving on is a team event. And if any team's gonna regain a deficit, Team Norway is that team. So Knotten has the huge responsibility now, and it's a big responsibility, 39 seconds deficit. But the pressure's off, Burson, and for Knotten, there is no pressure. We were expecting them to be in good positions, but now you could argue it's not as strong. So they'll be able to relax, and now all they could do is maintain, if not slightly improve on their positions. Yes, in a, in a strange way, the pressure is, so there's less to lose now because they're already losing in, in terms of where they would expect to be, so it, it can only be the game. So yeah, let's hope that gives uh, Team Norway a little bit of freedom, freedom and also Team Sweden. They're coming thick and fast now, so seventh place was Czech Republic, a decent time. Moldova still doing incredibly well, especially when two of their athletes raced two hours ago in, a, in another intense race. United States 10th position, that's a, a good performance from them again today. It's like uh, United States and Switzerland, they've really been inspired by the performance of their teammates this morning in the single mix relay. And uh, just trying to get, uh, we'll get a chance soon to see where Belgium are, if they're still surviving in the races. Uh, yeah, Terry Langer still there at 14 kilometers in 20th place. And they haven't missed a target yet. France, Germany and Italy, one, two and three, neck and neck. This is what biathlon is all about, when it's close and when it's unpredictable. Dorothea Vida, very good at shooting, very fast at shooting and a very popular biathlete. Yeah, I can't wait to see what she's, uh, well, I think we can predict what she's going to do in the range. Uh, but uh, I'm surprised she's not attacking uh, slightly stronger on the track. She had five seconds, so she didn't even consider trying to extend those five seconds. Maybe expecting, of course, France with the very powerful skier third leg. Uh, of course, uh, Chevalier Boucher for France on the third leg. And there's Knotten. Schneider for Germany, only 15 World Cup starts, 81% hit rate. Definitely the weaker leg for the German team. Yes, yeah, so there'll be certainly pressure on Schneider, uh, her own personal pressure, team pressure. Switzerland, uh, brilliant day. Aita Gasparin is one of only three women athletes to have hit all of the 30 shots fired coming into prior to today's race. Hasn't missed a shot here. The other athlete, Stuich from Austria, has hit all 30. Aita Gasparin and Elvira Urberg. Elvira Urberg taking the anchor for Sweden. Dorothea Vieira still leading a good time. Burson having lost four seconds up until the 16.1 kilometer mark. Yes, yeah, so that's it. Uh, what do I mean? We're 1.5 from the exchange and Burson losing those seconds. She did say her form on the track will be a, a little wanting. So further back down the track, that's Bulgaria. Mylina Todorova, she's a good, great junior. She's uh, carried that over to senior level. And Stramus is there for Moldova. Levins from America. So the pace uh, and the packing, we often find that. Uh, get tucked in behind someone else, the journey's slightly easier. I didn't think that Vera would want to lead now that they'd caught her quite quickly. I think she's racing sensibly. I think that the conditions are very slow and it's heavy on the legs. So she's opting to go smart, take it steady, shoot well, or follow her a, a good process, I should say, rather than thinking about that outcome. And, uh, and, and that's, that's her strategy. I think it is. And um, yeah, the, the impo I think the importance of that first shot, we mentioned it when the Germans were, were on a deficit of 20 seconds through poor shooting. I think it's important to, to get into the range and uh, make sure you get, try to make sure you don't use any spare rounds to really build the confidence. Gaspar in there taking it from 18 seconds to 14.7, just in the course 
of 2.7 kilometers. So she's getting, she's going fast, and uh, the leading pace for Germany, France, and Italy is not that challenging. Knotten uh, must be worrying now for the Norwegian team. We mentioned her ski speech is great shot, but uh, 44 seconds behind now. It was 39, so not going the way the Norwegian would hope for. Brosen, uh, I think she was given her position there, sixth position. She'll probably know that, uh, aware of who started ahead of her. So we have penalty loops from France. Norway and Sweden, three out of the top six nations, have ended up on the penalty loop. Big surprise, really is a, a big surprise today. And uh, the women will have been briefed uh, when they saw the men missing targets. Uh, Fio Maie getting it wrong, and when he gets it wrong, Dali was slightly different because uh, there wasn't that much wind influence. I think it was the pressure of now wearing a Norwegian hat and uh, racing in a mixed relay. Yeah, it's uh, fir not the first mixed relay for the Norwegian team. As I said before, European Championships and the IBU Cup, a lot of success, victories in those instances. But uh, first one on the World Cup without any of the major names from the Norwegian team. Yes, uh, Tarja Bu, Johannes Tingisbo, they came first and third yesterday. Of course, Johannes Tingisbo winning so much watching the race today. So, first time in prone position. Jean-Paul Giacchino has done so much to assist uh, Julia Simon to raise her shooting standard, and she takes the all-important anchor leg today. Fast and furious expected from Italy. Watch those targets drop. Uh, well, the second one hasn't. It's a miss for Vera. And the... Uh, oh, amazing. The fourth target missed as well. Maybe. Difficult shooting conditions today, a lot of misses. But Gasparin, four for four, can she go clear? Five for five. Yes, she does. Gasparin is going to be chasing hot on the heels of France, Chevalier Boucher. Didn't expect Vera to miss two. It, I don't think it was the pace. Uh, she, she did very clever track time. Schneider, you mentioned her weakness possibly in terms of shooting 82%, 80% hit rate. She's on the penalty loop, not no. once, but twice. That is unbelievable for Germ Germany. Four major nations have been on the penalty loop, and twice now for Germany. Well, opportunity, Norway, Sweden, and Czech Republic. Mona Brorsen, she goes five for five, excellent shooting. Ah. She didn't let them down at the Olympics in the women's relay with that gold medal performance. Knotten uh, a little slower there. She wanted to make sure that shot went down. She safely put it down. So very much still alive in the race, the Norwegian team. Excellent performance from Mona Brorsen, closing that gap from 43 seconds pre-range to 37 seconds. Knotten, she's lost time, six seconds. Six seconds. Czech Republic very much a uh, very confident shooting there. Bobornikova, just a, a young athlete, but extremely confident. 22-year-old, off she goes. Now here is Germany. What a what a mess that was from third into the range to seventh exiting. But more importantly, that deficit time of 111, very much out of the the chase for the medals at this time. Gasparin's taking seven seconds out of Chevalier Boucher on that last lap, so skiing faster than the French. Well, the rain is pouring down and the pressure <laughs> is building as this race uh, continues through the forest. What a turn. We've had so many turnarounds of events today of leaders in the race. I think we're understating how tough the shooting conditions are because quite clearly it's taking people by surprise. And what I think it must be is that it's not that the, the wind is very, very strong. It's that it's gusting. It's moving in different directions and it's unpredictable. Quentin Fillon Maé, one of the most experienced biathletes, went the complete wrong direction. Yes, when he adjusted his rifle, that was, that, that, that was quite amazing. And, um, and he paid the price for it. He, he had to... Uh, find his way around the penalty loop. You really don't expect that at this level. The wind was, it was a constant wind. All you have to do is adjust your sights back into the wind, but easy sitting here. But when you're in the storm of a race, 
and uh, and he's just finding his form coming back so uh, he uh, maybe misjudged that one slightly Dorothy Avira doing well now in second position and uh, working together with Gasparin to uh, hunt down Chevalier Boucher here's Brosen uh, you just feel the energy there in terms of her pace She's, she'll always give her best but the form not quite there at her first World Cup of the season. So uh, Sweden still very much there. The shooting has been excellent. Well, Brorsen five out of five in her prone shooting coming up uh, for the stand next, 41 behind. It's gonna take a pretty exceptional performance uh, from the Norwegian team if they're going to expect to close down that gap and with Fem Steinovic in the final leg she is fast on the skis but with an average shooting of 82 percent I haven't got high hopes for Norway getting back into the podium position what about Germany Schneider uh, the energy uh, put out going right in the penalty loop 150 meters twice before you come back into the hill climbs it really takes the stuffing out of your legs but she's handing over to uh, Denise Herman Wick, which means she is one of the fastest skiers and she's accurate. 84% is not too bad. And uh, yeah, I think that with that ski speed, we could see the Germans come back into this. Oh, it's definitely not over. The race has still got a way to go, especially with Stan. They're uh, coming up soon. Dorothy Vera. Oh, Aita Gasparin taking her on the left side. This could be a little tangle. Well, Vera actually getting the wrong line, losing a lot of speed there. Great uh, skills from Gasparin. And Chevalier Boucher, she's now got the lead back that uh, Fabian Claude worked so hard to gain on lap one. And uh, it's we're back in the same situation. France taking the lead and the pressure is on. It's now theirs to lose. Yes, uh, Chevalier Boucher from Villard de Londres. She's 29 year old, vastly experienced. Uh, she'll be aware of what's happening behind her. And, and she knows, uh, Chevalier Boucher knows that she has to now manage this situation entirely as she would normally in, a, in an individual race. Forget the team pressure, but she is being uh, chased down by Aita Gaspar and Vera tucking in behind now. Uh, Dorothy Vera, she taking uh, seven seconds on Gasparin from shooting five, uh, shooting five all the way to the checkpoint 19.3 kilometers. So she's skiing fast. Hopefully that doesn't negatively affect her shooting. Can you get a, a, a time, if you can, on Knotten? She left the range a 49, I think it was. Nine seconds 48 she behind. lost from the shooting range. She lost nine seconds to the first checkpoint, and now a further three. So that is 12 seconds lost by Knotten from the shooting range. Now, oh, that's half a penalty loop, uh, practically. We did expect that this would be, in terms of ski speed, the, the weaker leg for Normie and Fensteinvik taking the anchor she's certainly uh, going to set a faster track time her shooting is reliable as well well the advantage for all of the teams or at least it neutralizes any advantage is that most of the weak legs are now they're happening on the third leg Dorothy Vera really is uh, Dorothy Vera and Chevalier Boucher are not weak legs it's an opportunity for France and Italy to get the uh, whatever advantage they can we just saw it Teresa Vobornikova 22 year old so so skilled uh, fearless in this pressure situation racing in the Czech Republic team uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, Czech Republic in seventh position at the moment only three seconds behind Germany at the front of the race it's an ace Chevalier Boucher coming in for the all-important stand shoot five shots standing three spare bullets should you require them should any targets remain She's come slowly into the range. Gasparin and Vera taking five seconds coming into the shooting range on the downhill. The wind you can see now just uh, picking up quite strong seven kilometers an hour from the left. Beautiful shooting from the, from Anais Chevalier Boucher. Come, she, she took command of her race. No fear. All five. Vera probably going to do the same and fast. Excellent yeah. shooting from Dorothy Vera, but although the skis are running very fast for Ita Gasparin, missing the last two shots. 
So uh, this event, Gasparin hit a straight 38 shots, uh, targets from 38 shots fired. She's just uh, beginning to wobble. She's back, still keeping Switzerland in third place. Could this be 10 for 10 for Mona Brorsen? Nine out of nine so far. Norway. Ah, did she feel the pressure of Knotten alongside? First shot missed from Norway. Steady. Excellent. Rapid drills, Brorsen threw that rifle on so fast. Uh, in a flash, Knotten has a, uh, oh, what's she doing? Little F, little struggle there getting the spear around in. Germany back. Czech Republic alongside. Not Can good for Knotten losing time on the skis and now a little bit of time in the range. She's under pressure with Germany right behind her with Schneider on her heels. Yep, with Bornikova missing the first, maybe that uh, youthful lack of experience. But see the calmness in her, I've watched her in all the races. Uh, she's a big name, going to be a big name for the Czech Republic. So uh, Knotten uh, with Norway in fifth, 117 behind. It's huge, Schneider there putting it to right this time a little but 122 behind and Czech Republic still very much at the races. They've done well, they're matching Italy so far, zero penalty loops, six dippers used, seventh position, what a race so far from Czech Republic. Yes, uh, and, and I think if Borinikova, she may well try and uh, limit the damage there, she's uh, what, uh, some nine seconds behind Schneider of Germany. Well, this is how it's done. Uh, coming in, commanding the race. With that can come a lot of pressure. But uh, Boucher, Chevalier Boucher, finding it easy. Well, <laughs> I'm out of breath watching. Another team going to be getting lapped. Is that Kazakhstan? And uh, yeah, that's it. You, they get taken out if you get lapped. What you, you do, the, the organizers don't want is that there are lap teams causing congestion and confusion. So when you get lapped, you're withdrawn. And for some teams, that's the goal. Dorothea Vira now hunt, hunting down Chevalier Boucher and doing a good job. 17 seconds when she came into the shooting range behind and 15 seconds as she left. We'll get a, a measure now. She's skiing slowly. Uh, She's she, skiing she, very slowly. Uh, she really has lost a lot of time. So Chevalier Boucher putting the pressure, really putting the hammer down and kicking a strong pace. Vera struggling. Looks like Aita Gasparin is struggling. And behind her, Brorson. I think Brorson will see an opportunity. She'll see that the athlete ahead uh, appears to be running out of steam to the top of this climb. And that, that doesn't that does lift your performance when you're chasing, doesn't it? The visual of someone struggling ahead of you. And Julia Simon going for France. Uh, I think she's, uh, yeah, certainly a, a good advantage for Julia Simon, but I don't want to speak ahead too much because anything can still happen. As we've seen already, only Italy has not ended up on the penalty loop of the, the teams predicted to be on the podium. Yes, Italy, six pairs. It's um, certainly a good performance. The French team have used six pairs as well, but uh, also a penalty loop, so penalised there by some 26 seconds. And of all the athletes in the field, I don't think we would have expected Fio Maillet to be on the penalty loop. Absolutely not. Heartbreaking when he went the wrong way with his sights. So Knotten is still in six, uh, losing seconds. Is that right? She's 126. What was she when she left the range? Uh, I think it was, yeah, 117. So another nine seconds lost. Well, Vobornikova, you can see she's in stature. Well, we'll see her again. The rifle <laughs> looks almost as big as she is. The heavy rifle on her back, almost four kilograms. Uh, and most of the weight is in the barrel. So you really feel it swinging around high up on your shoulders. Reading the track well, Chevalier Boucher going wide. Uh, the snow is less mushed up on that side of the track. Quite a dirty track, isn't it, with the bits of trees and little branches, uh, small bits of the tree on the track. And that makes the skis even slower. When it's dirty like this, the, the skis, they have to put a lot of wax that repels the dirt. It was 15 seconds uh, departing the range. Well, it just shows the, the pace, really, that Chevalier Boucher is setting on the track. 
Dorothy Avira handing over to Vidotsi. And uh, although Vidotsi skiing very well, had a fantastic first trimester, we are a bit apprehensive about her prone shooting. If it all goes to plan, the prone goes down well, then I've got high hopes that she's going to be putting Julia Simon under a lot of pressure. Great skiing from Ines, uh, Eta Gasparin here. She has, well, I think she's done a fantastic job. 48 seconds back now from Chevalier Boucher. Mona Brorson, she's really putting the, the hammer down now. She's struggling, but I think maintaining a decent speed relative to our expectations. She's fighting very, very hard. Yes, that's why she's in the team. Only one spare round required. Brorson is, is that reliable on the range. Here's the anchor leg athletes uh, <laughs> nervously. Well, I was going to say, watching the screen, having a little look up. They know roughly where they're going to slot in. Of course they do. And Czech Republic handing over to Davidova, and that's definitely, she's very, very fast. Very fast with a 90% shooting rate, so good possibility she will do well. Yes, Davidova, two races here, uh, two times fifth position, very much on form. At the front of the race, it's France, it, it fluctuated, Fio Maillet dropped them down uh, incredibly, we didn't expect that. But uh, Chevalier Boucher from Villard de Lons has brought France back to the top again. And really reliable athlete leading the World Cup, uh, Julia Simon gets underway for France. Horrible conditions out there. You can see the pain. Dorothy Vera is fighting hard, getting into the tuck, desperate for breath. But you're slipping as well. You're not able to get any recovery time on this course. Vera into second place. And this brings back memories for me back in Antwerp's World Championships there in February 2020. They finished on home snow in second place. You have to touch. I hope that was a touch. I think it was a touch. And uh, off goes Vitotti. She didn't, after the sprint race, start in the pursuit because she finished way down in the 60s and didn't get a start. Switzerland, yes, Switzerland are in third place in the mixed relay. They came third in the single mixed relay earlier this morning, so a brilliant day for Switzerland. Only twice out of the top 10 for Vitotti in the whole of trimester one, then 65th in the sprint because of those four misses in her prone. Four misses, oh, don't say it. Uh, she did, she, she only hit one out of five in that sprint race. And, and that brought, will have brought back uh, negative memories from last season where sadly that happened on many occasions. In the relays last year, even when she was going through that bad process, she was pretty reliable in terms of the relay with three spare rounds. So I think Italy will still be quite positive. Schneider handing over to Denise Herman Wick. And uh, I think it's, she's going to go fast. There's no doubt about it. She's one of the fastest. And I think that Fem Steinovic from Norway is going to struggle to keep the pace. I'm just wondering if Fem Steinovic will try and stay there. I mean, that would be the, 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 the best strategy. But yes, you're taking yourself into a risk place when it comes to shooting. Get carried along. And D Davidova, she's getting hand to go over to now. And again, big gap between her and Denise Hermanvik and the Norwegian Fem Steinovic, so a lot to catch up for the Czech Republic athlete. Todorova for Bulgaria, they are having a great race today, ranked 13th, they're up into 8th. Poland, so happy for Poland, it's going incredibly well for them, and it's been quite a, well, a period of drought almost for the Polish team, but certainly back at the races in style today. Ranked 12th, 9th at this present time. So a couple of teams have been lapped. We did see uh, Latvia, uh, sorry, Kazakhstan, but now Latvia have been lapped as well. United States 11th, Austria ahead of them in 10th, 235 behind. Only six spare rounds required for the American team. Looking at the, uh, the lap times, lap eight and nine, Zuk doing absolutely fantastic. Only one second behind. Oh, they did. It was a very vague touch, but a touch it was. That was a fingernail touch, <laughs> wasn't it? Whoa, oh, yes. Ho, ho, ho. I'm amazed looking at that handover. You don't want to risk anything, and uh, it has happened with teams at the European Championships. I remember feeling so sad. They were half a meter over the line. There is a, a zone, a 30 meter zone, in which you have to make contact. So, uh, yeah, you risk a lot of <laughs> nervous energy by not making a positive, firm 
slap on the shoulder or the backside or anywhere as long as you touch uh, a body part. Elvira Oberg, 53 seconds behind Julia Simon. Now, that's a tough order to close 53 seconds on Julia Simon, but she can definitely get back onto the podium for Sweden. Now, let's have a look at the energy here on the track. And uh, Heike Gross, the Totsi, second and third there. So Heike Gross has got 20 seconds down on Vitozzi on lap one. For me, it just has to be run your own race. Don't try and catch up too much. The conditions are brutal. You will pay for that on your last lap. And I think Vitozzi, uh, uh, sorry, not Vitozzi, I think Dorothy Avira, she paid the price for her fast pace on lap one. She suffered, didn't she? Really blew up. Uh, that was definitely the case. And, uh, and, and you have to respect this track, but you're also representing your team, and here is Vitozzi, which is, she's in the dip, somewhat 30 seconds behind. The racist, you can just see her rifle in the far distance there. I've certainly felt, Scott, that uh, Julia Simon has, has lost the ski form. She's still got her shooting form, but she's struggled from day one here. And her struggling is still great performances uh, with a second and a third, but she's not quite the sparky, powerful athlete we saw before Christmas. Heavy conditions today, so if she is in poor form, then that's just going to punish you even more. Yes, and then maybe to justify that, uh, Vitozzi was 32 behind. She's brought it up to 26 now. Uh, and, and normally we'd see her running a little slower than Julia Simon at the front. Heike Gross, married in the summer. And Elvira Oberg, she is actually not closing much time at all on Julia Simon. Just two seconds or uh, thereabouts. So is that smart play or is her form dipping? Yes, um, it certainly she did allude to that actually, saying that she didn't quite feel as powerful, but she said, um, you know, it makes you focus in on the shooting a little more or, or feel better about your shooting. So I think we can expect uh, high level shooting from Uberg again today. Fem Steinovic stayed with Denise Herman Vic this whole uh, first lap, so that's good because Denise Herman Vic she's fast, and uh, although she's only well, she's taken back seven seconds uh, on leader Julia Simon since the handover. That's fast, and I, I do <laughs> that concerns me slightly as Fem Steinovic uh, punched her level high coming in for this first day. Uh, and the second last shoot in the whole race today. So prone shooting, another 2.5 kilometers to the stand, and then 2.5 to the finish line for the women. Love the music. Big pressure moment now for Julia Simon. 10 shots remaining for the French team. 10 targets, 16 rounds. Two years she's been working at improving her shooting. That was dead center. Slightly low right from center. Central again, slightly low. Little to the right, that full shot. Uh, would expect it. She delivers. Fantastic shooting there. And good grouping too. Composed. I wonder if the wind, you can see the flags aren't dancing too much. So good implications now for Vitozzi. On her prone, she's made two clicks to the left. So, yes, uh, offsetting by somewhat six millimeters. Well, the cameraman's got it wrong. Vitozzi's got it right. Three out of three. Four out of four. Brilliant, considering she only yes. had one out of five in her individual. Delighted for Fantastic. Vitozzi. Fantastic. What a result for Vitozzi. And oh boy, that's going to give her a lot of confidence. Let's hope it doesn't have reverse effect in the stand. And we're quite close to the Italian borders. A lot of it. Italian fans. Heike Gross has missed the second. She's missed the third opportunity. Sweden to get right back into this race. Oh, what a shame. The Swiss team running in the podium position throughout this race until this point. Oh, she needs to get the next three spare rounds or... She will end up on the penalty loop. She Elvira Oberg goes clear, and she's on the hunt. She certainly is. Heike Gross adjusting the sights, maybe a little late there, but let's hope it's, uh, yes, it has. It's brought the rifle back in. The wind has dropped down, so they're counter-adjusting for their previous yes. clicks. Well done, Heike Gross. Now then, has Fem Steinweg uh, pushed her pace too hard? No, it's okay. She's only missed one. 
That's uh, brilliant from Denise Herriman. She really did attack in terms of skiing. And Femstein and Vic also, she's on the move as well. So great shooting from all of the top nations so far, except for, unfortunately, uh, Lena Heike Gross. That was just a little bit unfortunate. Three mistakes, but th got them with the three spare dippers. Davidova, so she missed the third shot there. We'll hopefully get back to the range uh, viewing for that final info. I thought that was magnificent. Julia Simon losing a little form, but still great on the range. Julia Simon battling out of the range, but she's still got one shoot to go. That's the stand. So it's very important that she retains her composure because hot on her heels is Vitozzi, who is a very, very good stand shooter. I'm delighted for Vitozzi. It must be horrible to, in the individual, the, the sprint race, to have missed four out of five in the prone position. And then the pressure of that, she really attacked the second or the, the second yeah, lap of 2.5 it was then as well, same track as they're on today, and she pushed so hard she missed two in standing, that's unusual but she has the advantage actually of not having done the pursuit competition, so she is a little bit more rested than the other athletes so she's one of the fastest on the tracks, she's a 93% hit rate in stand, and she's clearly in good shooting form so she could potentially close this gap. Let's hope so. Uh, let's have a look at the time. 21.7 when she left the range. It was 29.1. So, uh, do you know what? I think Vitozzi will turn, as you say, the advantage of her rest yesterday. Yes, she didn't pick up any more points. Of course she didn't, but uh, she can really turn this her season around again today. Not much that Elvira Uber can do on the skis. Even if she goes very, very fast, she would have to hit them all. She's closed down six seconds on Vitozzi. That's a, something of a surprise. It, she looks quite laboured up there, Elvira Uber. Heike's uh, now really hurting on the track because of those three targets missed. She had to use all of her three spare rounds. So Heike still in fourth place. Herman Vick, uh, as she left the range, it was 116, so Herman Vick is hauling back uh, Heike. And uh, Femstein Vick, very impressed that she's managed to hold this intense uh, ski speed. She's lost the hat. I think she may have been slightly overheating, so the conditions are getting warm. I was going to say she's lost the gloves as well, but she doesn't even start with the gloves. And it's not, not nice conditions when it's raining, your hands get even colder. With what an average speed of about 22 kilometers an hour on the skis, 22 to 25 kilometers an hour, it's chilly. But if you're blessed with uh, good circulation like Lars Berger, <laughs> I don't think he ever raced with gloves. At minus 20, maybe it needs to be. You're so true. Yes, if you've been brought up that way, the, <laughs> the cells get used to it. <laughs> you can tolerate it, that's for sure. So... Second last lap coming in for stand shooting. It's still France at the front. Italy chasing. Can they do what they managed to achieve uh, on the day of the greatest pressure, which was the World Championships in Italy? Vera was part of the team that day. So was Vitozzi. She knows how it works. Can she reproduce to take them to second? Or can she even threaten Julia Simon? Well, needs, needs to get a little closer, really. Everyone, so Italy, Sweden, Switzerland, Germany, Norway, and uh, Czech Republic, all closing at least six seconds down on Julia Simon. So she's definitely going slower. Is that because she's tired, or is she saving herself because she has a gap for her stand shoot? Well, I think she's off form from what we saw pre-Christmas. Shooting is still good. We saw that in the prone, and we'll probably see it again in her stand shoot. Jaciela of uh, Poland there, also taking a second off Julia Seaman. So, Julia Seaman's not skiing fast. No, and uh, that, that maybe will give. So, Vitozzi will, will get that information. Of course, she will track side. So, maybe on the... Depends what happens on the range. We could see an attack from Italy to try and uh, close down in France on the final lap. But we have to, obviously, see the outcome on the range. And so often in a relay... You, can, you could say, oh, well, nothing's going to change much, but the pressure is felt the greatest on the final shoot. Well, <sighs> Julia Simon, 87% hit rate in the stand. She prefers to foot prone at 98%.
So we'll have to see what happens. It's going to be uh, uh, an exciting climax, whatever the outcome. Lena Hakey there accidentally skiing over the branch at the side, marking the side of the course, and the branch coming with her for a few meters. Well, here we are. France at the front uh, by 22 seconds at the last point of viewing. They're leading the wave into the final. The pressure shoot, the stand shoot about to come up. We've seen no reason to suggest that Julia Seaman will feel the pressure here. Let's hope it's routine as normal for France. She's worked hard for two years to improve her shooting. It's come to the top level now. She's been so regular throughout the whole season. Here it is, five shots to go. Excellent. Fast. Rhythm. Way Big miss. Off. Yeah, way over to the right. Big snatch to the right. She maintained a very fast pace for the last two shots. Confidence. And wow. it goes down. Brilliant. Uh, sometimes that can really affect you missing uh, one of the shots. Opportunity has gone for Italy. Now it's managing second place. Fabulous uh, and fearless. One shot to go, three spare rounds. Fantastic. So happy with Vitozzi having had an awful result on Thursday. Didn't even start the pursuit competition yesterday. Italy are out in second place. It's a tall order to expect Elvira Oberg to close down the gap on Lisa Vitozzi. Not impossible, but she'll be going for it. She gets this one, she'll be going for it. <laughs> when the form leaves you physically, you have to bring back the magic through the rifle and Elvira Oberg at this venue has not missed a shot. So from 40 shots fired, she's the only athlete to hit all 40 targets at this venue. Now then, Heike. Herman the, for Germany. A battle for the flower ceremony. Ah, Fim Steinweg, she's lived with that pace so well and De Herman missing the last shot. Gives an opportunity for Norway. I'm so impressed with Fim Steinweg. She needs this one. They both get them at the same moment. It's a race on the skis now for third, fourth and fifth position between Switzerland, Germany and Norway. And you know where my money would be and that's Denise Herman Vick who is Definitely the fastest of the trio. Now, Finstein makes she, she knows how this works. Uh, she needs to get one meter behind. She needs to just live with the pain if she can. I thought this was excellent from Oberg. Handled the pressure fantastically. So Vitozzi requiring one spare. You can just see the feel how difficult the, the gloves are wet, the rifle's wet. And uh, one shot there missed from Julia Simon. Only three of the top seven did not end up on the penalty loop. And that's Czech Republic, Switzerland and Italy. Lampitz is on the track for Slovenia, the former cross-country skier who came fifth in her first ever Biathlon World Cup. Didn't do so well in the sprint here, but uh, she's on the track now, Lampitz. Uh, if we can keep an eye on her, she's 4.43 behind, and the Slovenians in 16th place. France at the front, how's the deficit to Italy? It was 23 as they left the range, Scott. Any indicators uh, that maybe improved slightly, but Vitozzi, in fairness, uh, looks like she's at her limit. If I was a coach at the side of the course, I would be saying hunt down every single second you can. It doesn't matter if it's 20 seconds. If somebody falls, there is an opportunity to go past. Yes, There's no, always an opportunity. Now, that is a valid uh, comment on a, on a track that's as icy as this, as difficult as this. Uh, Vitozzi has pulled, is that right? Yes, she's pulled back three seconds. Three seconds and, uh, yeah, the same four seconds for Elvira Oberg. So it looks like they're both conforming to that protocol and going very fast in the hopes that if there is a fall, they'll be able to claim back some time. So Fem Steinweg uh, is detached in sixth place. Uh, Denise Herman skiing away from the Norwegian. The big names, they may review it. Roisland not racing today. Johannes Tingis Bo not racing today. Taria Bo not racing today. They've both podiumed in each of the previous two races here. 
And Hickey Gross, she is fighting hard, but a very relaxed looking Denise Hermanvik is right on her heels. And I suspect that when they get down the hill, Denise Hermanvik is going to attack. So I'm um, just looking, is there a possibility? Yes, we'd expect Herman Vick to pass Heike Gross, uh, but can Finn Steinbeck catch up with Heike Gross, the Swiss athlete? She's only nine seconds behind. Uh, having lost eight seconds already, she would have to be saving herself for the final part of the course, and I'm not too sure yeah. if she's got it in her. It's game over, yep, I think it is game over. So Vitotti, you mentioned the, this aspect of the track. We have seen a couple of athletes fall here today. We wouldn't expect it from Vitozzi, from Sapada. Plenty alpine skiing there as a kid. Lovely. Very controlled. Lovely. I'm so happy for the Italian team. Uh, ranked, uh, of course, uh, eighth coming into this event. That's on the mixed relay ranking from last year. I think... Uh, you said to me at the start of the race that you thought Italy would reach the podium today. They're not regulars, and uh, so far, so good. It all came down to whether Vitozzi got those <laughs> prone targets down, and she did not only get them down, but cleanly. No spares required. Look in the background. Uh, the, I, think, and I think, to be honest, with respect, and Elvira Uberg on top form would really have had a go at closing down into second place. She's uh, happy, well, comfortable in third. Nobody's uh, going to threaten her at this moment. So clearly she's taken the foot off the pedal and not trying to chase Vitozzi anymore. Uh, who has not going to be taking the foot off the pedal is going to be Gross and Herman. Vic, who is going to come out on top out of this little duel here? I suspect that Denise is going to attack now. And she does, oh. charging up on the left-hand side of the screen, jumping up the hill, <laughs> but a response from... Uh, Gross also trying to keep on her heels. Oh, I, th I think that Heike Gross took the wrong line there. It, it opened the door so wide for Herman to get the best snow, the best line. And, but uh, Heike Gross will not give in. The Swiss athlete in red, she'll be trying to hold on to the dark shoot, suit of the German. There's Sandra Flunger running alongside former biathlete herself. She's telling her athlete what she must do. And uh, Heike Gross will deliver. And she is a fighter. Look at the aggression. Absolutely not giving up. What an effort from Heike Gross there, trying to stay on Denise Herman's heels. What a day for France. It uh, took a few wobbles on this journey, but uh, without doubt, the calm, the clear shooting of Julia Simon has anchored the French team to a victory here in Pokyuka. One penalty loop, and to say that it was the the man, the, the best of the biathletes in the male field from last year, Fion Maillet, on the penalty loop. Luckily for him, he had a strong team around him. What a day for Italy. And wonderful to see Vitozzi putting it so right on the range when only two days ago it went so badly for her on the range. Second place for Italy. I'm surprised they're not dancing out there and lifting her in the air. There they come. What a day. Second place for Italy. And, uh, well, it was a, a difficult race for Sweden. I think they expected more. But when you start as badly as they did, and uh, it's hard to come back from that. And De uh, Ponciloma missing or making it difficult as well. Uh, uh, one penalty loop for Sweden. And Gross, uh, Heike Gross is still in there with the potential now of getting past Denise Herman Vick. She's got the speed and she's got the wind draft. Oh. So it's hard to play for. I don't think, I think Herman Vick uh, thought it was over. It wasn't. Brilliant race there from Switzerland to take fourth place. What a fantastic race from <laughs> Heike Gross. What a great effort. And she never gave up. And I think that Denise Herman Vick, maybe she got a bit complacent. Ah, Sandra Flunger, uh, her coach from what, one kilometre out, ran alongside and gave the clear instruction, stay there, you still have a chance. Get in behind, you still have a chance. Norway, without the big names, uh, many thought they would still certainly podium. Many thought they would win. They haven't. They haven't podium. They haven't won. They're in sixth place today. You would not have expected Dali to be the weak link on the Norwegian team. Well, the strong teams uh, coming too, but uh, I was going to say a newbie on the block. Switzerland are a growing team in 
the male, the male field, the female field, together they've worked well. And uh, we've got a fourth position earlier today in the single relay, single mix relay, they were on the podium. It's exciting. Hopefully uh, the future is going to be bright for the Swiss team. I think it is. They've invested a lot over the last 10 years. And the uh, Czech Republic there, only eight spare rounds. So the shooting is good, no penalty loops. And uh, it's respectable, seventh place. Well, I'm just thinking ahead to, to the Olympics in three years' time, just over three years' time. You could be looking at some future Olympic medalists now. In, with the ab absence of Lukas Hofer and Dominic Bindish, they've still got a strong team. In fact, arguably, one of the strongest. That's, that's, yes, they've still got uh, Lukas Hofer, still hasn't come back from that shoulder injury. And uh, I'll tell you what, the, the floodgates of funding will probably start from after today. Well... You can see the delight there. I, I mentioned Poland, they haven't had it all their own way. The budget hasn't been strong. And you can see the delight there as uh, Poland, uh, Jaquila, Joan, Joanna Jaquila coming in. Much improved performance from the Polish team into eighth position. Shooting has been brilliant. In fact, this is, a, if I'm right, the best shooting score. The Polish team only requiring five spare rounds. But it's the French team who can hold their hands up high. The relays, unpredictable to a point. Of course, the strong teams tend to come through like the cream floating to the top, but mistakes can still be made. And they were made today by Norway, by Dali on the penalty loop. So Poland uh, followed the athletes, <laughs> know the tracks well, but by knowing them so well, so many times around, the legs are tired. Austria, I think, would have expected a little better. And look at this, Belgium from being down in 19th. The birthday girl has brought them back into 10th. That's a pretty good performance for Belgium. Ranked 24th, I, I, Lotte Lee, sorry, taking the anchor. It was Maya Klutens, the birthday girl, on leg three, 21 today. And, uh, and I think that's a, a, a very strong performance. We did see many issues with the snow having filled the foresight of uh, leg two of uh, Thierry Langer's rifle. I hope they haven't... Uh, I hope there won't be a jury decision later to penalise for those actions on the range. They uh, cleared the snow and uh, they've managed to finish all the way up in 10th. And I'm impressed with uh, the Austrian team as well. They didn't have Ader and they didn't have Lisa Teresa Hauser. So they were at a slight disadvantage, but still, they did well. Ninth position. Slovenia, well, 5.04 behind. I think there's another penalty looping. Sorry, included to that score. And Lampitz, though, putting in a very, very good performance. Slovenia, 12. The United States, 13th. And Slovakia with 10 spare rounds and 14th. Well, the rain thankfully has kept away until the final day and they expected more win but it, it was a little difficult made it uh, more challenging on the range you see that little effort there to overtake from Bulgaria that is if you're in the uh, slipstream of another biathlete it's possible to to propel past them so you've got to be careful and fight all the way to the line happy day for Italy and of course, the, the, the World Cup, eh, not this week, heading over to Ger Germany and Bavaria. Tomorrow, most teams will be driving, technicians driving up to Bavaria this evening. But uh, it's the wonderful tracks of Ruppolding, which you know so well over the years. Well, uh, it's time to begin to wrap up as again we see the French team raising the hands high. Julius Simon on form. Barely missed any targets. So the French victory, Italy in second, and Sweden in third.
Julia, congratulations uh, bringing home a very strong team performance, a win, and I would say a masterclass performance for you as well. Yeah, it was a really good team effort. It was nice to, to raise the first uh, mixed relay uh, of the season and a uh, good performance for us. Very happy also with my race, so perfect. The very solid shooting from both uh, in these difficult conditions. How do you do it? Yeah, it wasn't so difficult. You just need to be to stay focused on the on the win. But uh, yeah, it was quite okay. The same that the, the same win at the Maizero Ring. So yeah, it was uh, it was okay for me and uh, really happy with the, this uh, only one mistake. So it's a, it's a good race. Absolutely, congratulations to you and the whole team. Thank you.
posto, second place, secondo posto per Didier Biolat, Tommaso Giacomel, Dora Lume, Lisa Lutazzi, Italia. First place and the winners. Première place, Medaille de Arthur. Fabien Clouan. Quentin Pion. Marie. Henri Chevalier Boucher. Julia Simon. Team France. Francia. Amici d'Italia, grazie per la vostra visita, vi auguriamo buon viaggio e ci vediamo la prossima volta qui a Pocchiuca.